there's interaction. There's always interaction in my work, whether it's a, a person who purchases it and then wears it, or whether they look at it and just think, oh my God, that's so cool. Like, I couldn't imagine myself wearing that, but it's just so cool. So if they would give themselves permission, they probably would wear it, but there's a little shyness or whatever, and that's okay. They're, they're responding to it. It's, it's fun. It's, it is very different than selling like a painting or a sculpture that sits in their home. There's, they have to be involved. <laughs> I do think that, that, that the people who wear my work are presenting themselves as artists, are, are showing themselves um, in a different way, and they get to be more playful maybe, or more, they're gonna be noticed, so they have to be okay with that have to be okay with being noticed um, and and they're gonna get a lot of questions and they may actually even get touched <laughs> like physically touched these people are like what is that how does that feel you know um, and and that's okay too but it it does get people to communicate um, in ways they might not have because the person was wearing it. I really am more thinking more about the aesthetic part of the pieces. Um, so, Sometimes, I mean, most of the time, I don't even know who the person is really going to buy this piece or what they're going to wear it for or when. Um, I'm so into the creating of it and how it comes together. The morph, you know, how it morphs from one idea to the ending is such a transition and transformation and it's the spark that keeps me going as an artist um, because it's interesting and I, I want to see what happens at the end because it isn't always clear to me what's going to happen at the end um, because I work in a way that allows the, the work to tell me how to finish it or how to complete it and and a lot of times I put the pieces on most of the time I put the pieces on to see how they feel and how they work and and how they move because movement is also a part of it um, it it has its own life I have a master of fine arts degree in jewelry and sculpture and I uh, I was in my jewelry class, That's my master's is in jewelry mostly, and my professor said, you know, you need to learn some more techniques. So um, off I go for a workshop on chainmail, and it was one of those things that's really just was very natural for me, uh, easy for me to do, the tools were easy for me to use, the technique was easy for me um, within I don't know how long the workshop was, I don't remember, but within the workshop time frame, I was actually cutting up two different kinds of metal and creating patterns. And the instructor was like, I don't even do that. You know, so uh, it just is a natural thing for me. Um, and I really love the way chainmail is because it's soft, but it's not, but it's still hard because it's metal. It, it's fluid and it flows in a way that metal stiff metal can't do so it has all these surprises and that's fun that's fun i like working with it uh, i'm getting ready for a couple of shows that will feature my jewelry more so i know that i'm going to actually be making more jewelry and it's nice for me to change between the two um, because the bigger wearable pieces are more creative for me they take more time, but they're more creative, so they're interesting, and they challenge me a lot. Um, the jewelry is like, I know how to do this, I can do this, but it's it's so small, you have less room to be expressive. So your details are really important, but there's just this little space that you're working in, and sometimes you just get tired of working in this little space. And I think that it's really becoming a good balance for me to work between the two. I actually buy this material in sheets and I, I, I'm able to buy this large ring and the small ring 
and I cut it one single ring at a time to get the shape that I want and then I restitch it so I have a seam here of rings all the way around and I, I stitch them together and then I actually solder all the rings where I'm connecting with not without a torch I use a soldering iron to solder them but that allows me to make bigger pieces and this the stainless steel rings everything soldered in here so they're pretty strong and I don't have to worry about it catching on people's clothes or whatever they're wearing it with um, but that's really why I can make bigger pieces and I'm really glad that I can because it's fun <laughs> so this is a a vest I'm working on and it's a commission for a woman in Iowa <laughs> of all places it's going to Iowa and this is a pretty large vest I mean this is way too big for me it won't even look right on me at all um, and at this point it's very close and just to give you an idea of what I've been doing I've been I'm, I got it at one stage and I sent it to her in the mail to try on and then she sent it back to me and I did some more adjustments and then I sent it back to her and now we're at the point where I actually need to cut out about an inch on each side so I'm I'm gonna open up a seam that I had had soldered and then cut out a piece of the metal on each side and then stitch it back up and then solder it again and then it'll be done so it's gone through a lot of stages <laughs> <laughs> it has a chain that goes with it let me just put it like this and the chain has a lobster claw on each end so it'll have a clasp on each end so she can clasp it let's say if she wants to do some kind of drapey thing she can clasp it down here it has another end with a lobster claw and she can bring it up and clasp it somewhere else so it has a um, the lobster claw and the chain gives her variety in how she can wear this. I am adding um, colored aluminum, anodized aluminum, um, as accents on the bigger wearable pieces, the one-of-a-kind pieces, and a few scarves actually. Um, just starting to add the color and it's really been fun to to do that and I'm very excited because I just bought some gold from a new new supplier some gold anodized aluminum rings and some black anodized aluminum rings and they're both like shiny colors and they're really pretty <laughs> it's like oh I can do stuff with these I mean these are these are colors that I know I can um, do patterns with and be really happy with the results boy it's it's all across the board <laughs> I have um, small scarves that are real easy to wear and that can be someone who's in their 20s to somebody who's um, 60 or 70. Um, I have I had a woman who purchased a vest from me who is 80 something and she looked fabulous in it and it was something that she just decided she was going to do and I I admire that because she wasn't afraid of it and, and it was very um, she was a strong person interior strength which was wonderful um, there's there's a a man who commissioned a shirt for me who owns a lingerie and um, vintage clothing store in Atlanta <laughs> and he was really fun to work for because he had a very specific um, very specific idea of what he wanted he wanted something that was very fitted had a certain look to it and gave me a lot of challenges so it was interesting um, and he was probably around 50 so there's a big range of people and it surprises me a lot I didn't think that would happen it just happens I think there's a sort of a natural way people respond to it they've seen it before somewhere and that they relate to it so it has more of a entrance I mean they're playful I want to say playful um, because they're unexpected so it's an unexpected thing that happens when you're wearing it it's not 
it's not typical, it's not ordinary, it's not what you expect, it's just different. It keeps people kind of intrigued. <laughs>